Eastside community making their voices heard about the kind of growth they want to see in their community. What they think is slowing economic growth in their neighborhoods. A U.S. Air Force software development unit tasked with helping to protect our nation. How that work is happening right here in San Antonio. Live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police say two overnight stabbings appear to be random crimes. However, both stabbings may have been the work of one man who struck the victims by surprise but left a significant clue behind. That suspect has been arrested. Both stabbings happened on the southeast side of town. As Katrina Weber tells us, police say a blood trail is what put them on the suspect's trail so quickly. With serious trouble closing in on him, this 23-year-old man takes time to smile for our camera. He also told us this was his destiny, in handcuffs after two separate stabbings overnight. San Antonio police believe he attacked at random, first stabbing a 62-year-old man working outside this HEB in the 4100 block of South New Braunfels. They say he was emptying trash cans just after 3 this morning when he was attacked from behind and stabbed in the back. About 10 minutes later, they believe the same attacker struck again. A 54-year-old man sleeping at a bus stop near South New Braunfels and East South Cross was stabbed in his chest. Then bleeding, he went across the street to a store for help. Both victims were taken to a hospital. When police found the suspect, they say he was bleeding too from a cut on his arm. Police say the suspect left a blood trail that led them in his direction, but they had to cover a lot of ground before they found him here. This is almost a mile away from that last stabbing scene. Investigators believe he walked the whole way, but after getting bandaged up by paramedics, he got a ride. Just related to both attacks. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Looking outside with live cam, it's a ditto day. Beautiful clouds out there, but it's doubtful they're going to produce what we need. Justin. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, those clouds really aren't building up. We do have some showers on the radar, but nothing here over San Antonio. And we're going to have to really prepare ourselves for a hot summer like week. Temperatures are going to really start to jump up as we get into the afternoon hours. Let's first start with the radar, though. We'll show you where the showers are right now. We're seeing a little bit of that activity around Victoria this afternoon. A few of those showers trying to make their way up towards Gonzales. Not a lot of success. Most of this is going to stay right here along the coastal plains, and I don't expect this to make it up to San Antonio, so it's going to be a mostly sunny afternoon. Here's a look at some of the weather headlines. As we watch the clouds roll in this morning, they were there for a while, and now they're starting to scatter out, and we're seeing a lot more sun. Could we hit 100 this week? It's not out of the realm of possibility, especially as we get towards Thursday and Friday. Hurricane Fiona has made landfall on the Dominican Republic and is now starting to move north back out of our open ocean. We'll have the latest on that. Plus... A cold front could it move into our area by early next week. Models are hinting at that. We're going to have the latest on that coming up in just a bit. In the meantime, it is 87 outside. We'll call it partly cloudy. Dew point is still stuck at 70, so it is still very humid. The feels like number 92 at this hour. And uh, looking at some of the temperatures around the area with these clouds working through, uh, we're sitting at 87 in Holotus, 87 at the airport, 89 Stenson. 92, one of the warm spots there in Divine, also 90 out in Gonzales. We're going to talk more about this forecast and these hot temperatures coming up. Thank you, Justin. Two families whose daughters were killed three and a half years ago in the Inaqua Springs neighborhood now calling out Sheriff Javier Salazar. The Bibiesca and Montez families, along with their attorneys, announcing that they have sent a letter to Attorney General Ken Paxton requesting that the Texas Rangers take over this investigation into the 2019 deaths of 10 year old London Bibiesca and 16 year old Alexa Montez and their mother Nicole Olson. The three were found dead in their Naco Springs home. The medical examiner had ruled the case a murder suicide. But the sheriff had directed investigators to look further into the case. The family say since 2020, they haven't heard from the sheriff's office and have often at times felt attacked by the sheriff. He's on horses and he's showing off new boats and he's showing off new tech and he wants to talk about how great he is, but he doesn't like anything that shines a negative light upon him. So it, I mean, it, it's horrible, but it makes sense that he doesn't want to talk to us because I think we're a constant reminder of the fact that 
he made a lot of mistakes on this case. The Texas Attorney General's office has received a letter from the families, but no decision has been made on this case. We've reached out to Sheriff Salazar and are awaiting any response from him. We're going to have more on this story later on this afternoon. The power is back on along Wetmore Road on the north side after a man crashed into a utility pole after one o'clock this morning. Firefighters say they had to use what we call the jaws of life to cut the door off the car to get the man out. That man was taken to University Hospital with minor injuries and is expected to be okay. CPS also came out and restored power to street and traffic lights. And repairs have been completed in Lytle after a damaged wire line was discovered. Crews began working on those repairs late last night. Around 5.30 this morning, they announced that the work had been completed and water was pushing out again. They did ask residents to be patient as the water pressure builds up around town. The city of Lytle will remain on a boil water notice until tomorrow. After months of surveys and focus groups, San Antonio for Growth on the east side shared its results with local leaders and the east side community. Some of the changes residents said they want to see include affordable housing, better infrastructure and more amenities. District 2 Council Member Jalen McKee Rodriguez says the results of the survey line up with what he hears from constituents. My field office and we have constituents coming in the door nonstop, calling nonstop and there's people who are fearful of being evicted. There's people who are angry at their property taxes and they're saying, you know, it wouldn't be so bad to pay this much if I felt like my street was being fixed and if I felt like the issues that affect me every day are being addressed and that hasn't been the case. Um, People were also asked about the issues that slow economic growth on the east side. Number one on the list, crime and safety. The U.S. Air Force Software Development Unit, it's the 90th Cyberspace Operations Squadron. It's the newest tenant inside the historic San Antonio Light Building. And take a look around. There's so much going on. Jordan here with Waldo. So what is your guys' mission here? So our mission here at the 90th uh, as the Air Force's only operational squadron doing software development in support of U.S. Cybercom is to develop the applications that our offensive and defensive operators need and deliver it to them when they need it uh, in order to work wherever they need it. Every week we're reading in the news about cybersecurity attacks, and whether it's uh, industry or critical infrastructure or the government, um, the applications that we're writing and delivering here uh, ultimately ensure that we can protect our national, national defense, national interest, uh, that we can bring the fight forward when, when called upon. In terms of retention and recruitment, we're surrounded by universities that have grown so much. How important was that in your decision coming to downtown? Being close to the universities is huge, right? So a majority of our um, of our folks uh, came from Texas universities. Uh, we interact with the uh, with the colleges themselves quite a bit. Uh, so our ability to improve that uh, and ultimately recruit students from the local universities and bring them in uh, is only going to increase that pool and, and raise the talent level even higher. All right. Thank you so much for your time this morning. And guys, we are far from done. We're going to have so much more on all of these efforts right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Still coming up this half hour, the Cowboys able to get their first win of the season and it took all 60 minutes to get there. Coming up in sports, how a kicker became the talk of the game. It's been about five years since Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico. And today, parts of that island once again underwater after getting slammed by a Category 1 storm. But it's not just the flooding that people are talking about. Look at the widespread impact of this latest hurricane after the break. Funeral! Procession! Britain and the world said a final goodbye to Queen Elizabeth II at a state funeral that drew presidents, kings, princess and prime ministers. Huge crowds gathered along the streets of London this morning to honor the monarch whose 70 year reign defined an age. Ahead of the service, a bell tolled 96 times. That's once a minute for each year of Elizabeth's life. Royal Navy sailors used ropes to draw the gun carriage carrying her flag draped coffin to Westminster Abbey before Paul Bears board inside the church. Atop the coffin sat a written note from King Charles III. We'll have more on today's services coming up in the next half hour. In the meantime, we turn to Puerto Rico, where a state of emergency is in effect. Hurricane Fiona has been slamming into that island. That hurricane making landfall Sunday afternoon, dumping more than two feet of rain. 
knocking out power on the island. ABC's Rita Roy has a look at the widespread damage. Catastrophic damage across Puerto Rico, Hurricane Fiona making landfall Sunday as a Category 1 storm, bringing torrential rain of more than two feet in some parts of the island, along with wind gusts over 100 miles per hour. Trees and power lines knocked down. Julito Serino says he was sleeping when the winds tore the roof off his house. Fiona is the third named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season, sparking a flash flood emergency overnight across Puerto Rico, with one river rising 13 feet in just one hour. In one mountain town, rushing water washing away this newly constructed bridge built after Hurricane Maria. Watches, power poles, and a guardrail connected to the bridge are ripped from the ground. Everything connected to the structure pulled downstream. The conditions leading to an island-wide blackout more than 1.5 million without power. What is your biggest concern right now for Puerto Rico? I don't want any loss of life here. Um, once that's taken care of, um, then restoring the electric service. More than a thousand people are in shelters right now across the island. The power company says it will be days before power is fully restored, with heavy rain still coming down. Much of the island is still under flash flood warnings. The hurricane is slowly moving out, making landfall early this morning in the Dominican Republic. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Outside with live cam, you we were talking earlier on KSAT News Now. It may only be one hurricane, but this one uh, left its mark. That's uh, that's how it goes sometimes. You know, it hasn't been a very busy season, but all it mm -hmm. takes is one to do a lot of damage. And you see the damage there in Puerto Rico. It is not a good situation. Still some rain coming down. We're going to have more on that in just a second. First, the aquifer down eight tenths of a foot, 634.9. We're still in pretty bad shape here when it comes to the aquifer, well below average. In your pollen count, pigweed is moderate. It's at 100 molds. Ragweed and grass are all low. A look at your forecast straight ahead. I guess if you like summer, <laughs> well, I was gonna stick say, it around. You remember when you were a kid and whether it was cold or hot, you didn't really notice? Uh -huh. Even my daughter this morning was saying, Mom, it's so humid out there. Wow. Yeah. Does never, she not normally, words never have come out of her mouth like that. She before. doesn't normally notice? Most kids don't. No. They just go. Yeah. Shorts, T-shirt. Yeah. Don't think about it. Um, it's going to stay that way for a while longer. You know, I'm hoping maybe towards early next week we'll get a little bit of relief. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a full week before we even get there. And there's still some questions on timings and those sort of things. I want to show you a pretty eye-popping stat here. We've been tracking this, the year-to-date precipitation. And where we stand right now, if you look at January 1st through September 18th, we are at 8.20. And that makes us the driest year-to-date on record. So if you look back in 1917, uh, what, what they had at this point back in 1917, they had 8.23. So this is the driest on record. We averaged 23.25, so we're about 15 inches below average. 1925, they're at 8.30 at this time of year. 9.02 in 1954, you get the idea. We're on pace to have a very, very dry year unless something drastic happens. And there's not much in the forecast this week. I can tell you that much to uh, give us any sort of rainfall. August was pretty good to us, but now it's starting to dry up once again. And keep in mind, that's at the airport. So other places around South Texas have gotten a lot more rain than that. Uh, but uh, here in San Antonio, and particularly at the airport, it hasn't been great. We had the clouds this morning. Those are beginning to thin out. Now we're looking at 87 degrees at the airport. Southeast Julie winds at about 9 miles per hour. It's still awful humid out there, and so a heat index is going to be around through most of the afternoon. Uh, there's a satellite picture. We've got a few showers down along the coast, but just a partly cloudy skies here in San Antonio right now. Temperatures made their way up to 87 in Port SA, 88 Castroville, 86 out there in Bandera, and 90 already in New Braunfels. So promises to be a hot day there. Heat index, when you factor in the humidity, we'll get New Braunfels, 97. And it's just noontime. 94 in Seguin, feels like 98 in Gonzales, feels like 94 in Pleasanton. There is very little doubt that we'll get heat indices up around 100 this afternoon. So this is uh, this is one of those times where you got to be careful. You can't let your guard down. I know it's mid-September. We're thinking, oh, okay, things are going to get cooler. Not the case today. 
and we'll see these kind of numbers through much of the week. High temperatures today, 95 here in San Antonio, 93 Floresville, 94 Seguin, 93 in Gonzales this afternoon. Here's why. We've got a ridge of high pressure over top of us. It's one of those big heat highs and it is strengthening a little bit. It'll sit here, move around a little bit, but basically stay over Texas. And you can see that's basically wiped away any sort of rain across the nation's midsection. Meantime, we talked about this earlier, but Hurricane Fiona made landfall earlier on the Dominican Republic now that eye wall has moved back out over the Atlantic. You can see the rain still falling across parts of Puerto Rico on top of what they have already seen. This thing will finally move away today and they'll get to do some cleanup, but they got a lot of it there, unfortunately hit very hard by this hurricane. The latest with Fiona. Uh, right now, starting to maybe redevelop an eye there, but winds are at 85 miles per hour, gusting to 105. It's moving northwest at 8. Latest track takes it near the Bahamas by Tuesday with winds of 110 miles per hour, and then eventually up near Bermuda as a Category 3 major hurricane with winds of 120 miles per hour, finally moving into cooler waters. And uh, stays well east of the East Coast. Could kick up some surf there, but no direct hit to the United States. Our forecast shows that high pressure that I mentioned sticking around through at least Friday into Saturday before it finally moves out of the way. This could could open up the door for a front. I think Monday of next week still a long way away, so we can't say that unequivocally, but that's the uh, that's the idea and hopefully it does cool us down. In the meantime, we're going to get those temperatures uh, to be very warm this week. 98 Thursday, 98 Friday, probably our two hottest days and we could get up to 100. I certainly think there would, will be places around South Texas that get there. 95 Tuesday, 97 Wednesday, 98 Thursday, 98 on Friday. Close to some records. We officially go into fall on Thursday. And the weekend's still hot too before that front again hopefully gets here by early next week, guys. Ooh, I don't want to see that again. It's brutal. Hopefully this is summer's last gasp. Okay. That's what we hope for. All right. Yeah. Hopefully. Hey, the Cowboys kept their playoff hopes alive yesterday. We'll explain all that. And Becky Hammond makes history. Coming up. Pro football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. According to some of those stats, the Cowboys had to win yesterday to have a shot at the playoffs since they lost the first game. Good news, Cooper Rush knew the stats. Cowboys opening drive of the game. That's a nine-yard touchdown pass to Noah Brown from Rush. That's the Cowboys' first touchdown of the season. 7-0 Dallas before the end of the quarter. Tony Pollard finds the end zone from a yard out. Dallas up 14-3 after one second quarter. Since he quarterback Joe Burrow saw this four times in the first half, that would be... Dorrance Armstrong getting a sack. He had two by halftime. Burrow was sacked four times at the break. Cowboys had a field goal. It's 17-3. Cowboys. He takes nine minutes off the clock to drive downfield. Burrow finds T. Higgins for the five-yard touchdown. Two-point conversion is good. And we are tied at 17-3.45 to play. That was plenty of time for the Cowboys. Cooper Rush. Throws it. It's tipped. Noah Brown makes the catch for the 12-yard gain across midfield. Four seconds left. But Mayer from 50. That is a Cowboys victory. Here is your final from Arlington. Dallas wins it 20-17. to 17. Kicker Brett Mayer coming through when it mattered most. Nittling that 50-yard field goal. Every opportunity is rewarding, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I'm happy to, to do my part with this group. Um, the guys in the locker room are awesome. Uh, that This whole game was um, a ton of fun to be a part of. This whole locker room is a ton of fun to be a part of. So I'm embracing the ride and, and doing my part. Can you just tell me your feelings and thoughts when you saw that field goal go through? The win? When he came off his foot, I knew it was good. Yeah. He's done that more than one time here before. so. Just happy that we got the dub. Defense obviously kept us in tonight, and then Brett at the end uh, doing his job. And 88 on that last drive and the protection, and then Noah Brown catching the tip ball. Um, it's pretty incredible. All right, Dallas gets an extra day to rest to get ready for the Giants. That'll be Monday night, September 26th, MetLife Stadium. The Giants 2-0. and Kickoff of that one's at 7.15. Texas on the road for the first time this season in Denver. Take on Russell Wilson and the Broncos. Game was tied at six and a half. Take it to the third quarter. Wilson throws, but he's going to get picked off by Christian Kirksey. That's near midfield. Houston got down to the Broncos' four-yard line, but then they couldn't score. They settled for a field goal. Lead 9-6. Fourth quarter, Wilson finds Eric Solbert for the 22-yard touchdown. Broncos go back on top 13-9. 
Houston couldn't get close to scoring again. So here is your final 16 to 9. The Broncos beat the Texans quarterback Davis Mills as if he felt the offense left plays on the field late in the game. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, that's what we always talk about in our quarterback room and on the team. Um, all our job is to stay close the whole game. And then we got to win the game in the fourth quarter um, when I mean, the game's on the line. So um, tough one today. We just got to go out there and make our opportunities. All right, so now they take on the Bears at Soldiers Field. Chicago lost to Green Bay yesterday. We'll see how that turns out next Sunday at noon. Hey, you know, nothing like drawing four aces and winning a championship. Congratulations to former Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond. She led the Las Vegas Aces to their first WNBA title yesterday afternoon. The Aces defeated the Connecticut Suns 78-71 in Game 4 of the WNBA Finals to win Series 3 games to 1. Becky becomes the first head coach to win a WNBA title in their first season at the helm. And she's also the first former WNBA player to win the finals as a head coach after the game. She was asked what she was feeling now that she is a champion. You know, when I took the job in December, I thought when I started kind of breaking down their rosters that um, I could do something with it. I, I had a vision of what I wanted to do with this team. It's a little surreal. Maybe you can call me back in like a week when it sinks in. This is the first major sports championship for the city of Las Vegas, and this also creates a lot of stir, a lot of conversation about her possibly being the next Spurs head coach. Well, wasn't there a moment where she was being considered? Mm -hmm. And she's been she's and interviewed for over. several jobs yeah. in the NBA, but has never got one. So now she has this on her resume, and that's hard to overlook. In one year. In one year. Good for her. Yay, Becky. <laughs> All right, new today at five. It's been called the new Google for the Gen Z generation, but the social media platform TikTok is not without its own issues. What users need to do to protect their privacy, that is today at five after Entertainment Tonight. After 10 days of national mourning across the UK, Queen Elizabeth II has now been laid to rest. The Queen died on September 8th at 96 years old, ending the longest reign of a monarch in British history. ABC's Faith Abube reports hundreds of dignitaries and heads of state from all over the world were inside Westminster Abbey to take part in a funeral service this morning. A solemn procession marking the final farewell to Queen Elizabeth II. Members from every branch of Britain's military on hand for the rare state funeral. The Queen's coffin draped with a royal standard, topped with a wreath of flowers, the imperial crown, scepter and orb. Paul Bearers drawing the gun carriage, carrying the late monarch from Westminster Hall to Westminster Abbey, the church where she was crowned and where she was married. And now, where she is eulogized with hymns and prayers. 2,000 people, including members of the royal family, heads of state, dignitaries, and everyday people in attendance. Few leaders receive the outpouring of love that we have seen. King Charles III and the Queen Consort, leading members of the royal family and his household in procession. Even the Queen's great-grandchildren, Prince George and Princess Charlotte, walking along the Queen's final journey. The royal family visibly emotional, tears streaming down the king's face as the choir played God Save the King. Bells from London to Windsor tolling through the funeral. Authorities estimate about a million well-wishers crowded central London streets to see the pageantry. As the state hearse carried the queen's coffin from Wellington Arch to Windsor Castle, the national anthem playing. Crowds of mourners watching in silence. Some clapping, a show of respect as the funeral cortege passed by. Floor tributes from the public lining the path at Windsor Castle, leading the Queen to her final resting place. Britain's longest reigning monarch reunited with her late husband, Prince Philip, laid to rest at St. George's Chapel. And capping the deeply emotional day here in London, the United Kingdom pausing for two minutes after the funeral, observing a moment of silence for Her Late Majesty. In London, Faith Abube, ABC News.
In another part of the world, a Russian missile hitting very close to a nuclear power plant in southern Ukraine overnight. It did not damage the three reactors there, but it did hit some other industrial equipment in what Ukrainian authorities denounced as an act of nuclear terrorism. That strike following warnings from Russian President Vladimir Putin, who said there may be stepped up attacks on key Ukrainian infrastructure after his forces have suffered humiliating battlefield setbacks. Meantime, Ukrainian President Zelensky says that he had interpreted a lull in the fighting after a series of victories by his country's military forces as perhaps preparation for the liberation of all of Ukraine. The United States exchanging prisoners today with the Taliban, a Navy veteran who was in Afghanistan during doing some contract work back in U.S. hands. Mark Fredericks was kidnapped back in January of 2020 while they was there doing that work. He disappeared weeks before the U.S. and the Taliban signed a peace deal. President Joe Biden calling for Rick's sister to let her know that her brother is on his way back to the U.S. In exchange, the Taliban received Haji Mohammed Bashir, who was held in U.S. custody on drug charges. Authorities in Massachusetts say that they have requested a federal human trafficking probe after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis sent about 50 Venezuelan migrants to Martha's Vineyard to shine a national spotlight on immigration issues. DeSantis has denied claims that the migrants were duped into taking the flights with promises of jobs that didn't exist. It comes as more buses filled with migrants arrived in New York City from Texas on Sunday, including several sent by the mayor of El Paso. Officials in New York scrambling to accommodate the migrants. New York Mayor Eric Adams says Republican governors have refused his calls for coordination, and he's now considering using a cruise ship as a temporary housing. President Joe Biden says it's much too early to make a decision about another potential presidential run. In an interview that aired Sunday on CBS 60 Minutes, the president said, quote, my intention, as I said to begin with, is that I would run again, but it's just an intention. But is it a firm decision that I run again? That remains to be seen. The comments marked a shift from what he and his aides have been saying publicly for most of his presidency, adding fresh uncertainty to a question that will be front and center for Democrats and for this year's midterm elections. President Biden's advisors expect him to talk about another run with his family over Thanksgiving and Christmas with the hopes he'll announce his decision early in the new year. Taking a live look outside, we are looking at a very pretty day and getting ready for some very hot weather. Yes, we are. Temperatures are going to be awful warm this afternoon, well above average. So it's maybe not a great afternoon. Take the dog for a walk. We showed this earlier this morning on GMSA. Fido's forecast. And we got a great uh, picture in there. And uh, that's, that's uh, a dog going for a walk there. Beautiful shot. Uh, Shadow. Shadow going for a walk. Looks like he's probably going early in the morning there to avoid getting those paws too hot. We appreciate those pictures as always. And here's a look at that dog walking forecast. And if you want to submit a picture of your dog, by the way, the QR picture, QR code is there to get onto KSAC Connect. Uh, but this afternoon, we wouldn't advise it. Temperatures are going to be up in the mid 90s by 4 p.m. Heat index could be close to 100 today. So it's very, very summer like it's not until this evening that temperatures cool down a little bit. 88 degrees at 8 p.m. There's the scene outside right now. Partly cloudy, 87 southeasterly winds at 9. It feels like number 92. Case that 12 hour forecast 91 at 2 o'clock 95 by 5 p.m. Mostly sunny 93 at 6 o'clock. We'll see mostly clear skies this evening and clear skies tonight. Temperatures will drop off some, but not much. 80 by midnight southeasterly, southeasterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. Thank you, Justin. From east to west, crews are on the roadways getting to work, and those TxDOT projects mean some areas could see some closures. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavazos takes a look at the latest trouble spots and how you can get around them. We're a little more than halfway into the month of September, but of course the road closures are going to continue into the early days of October. But let's go ahead and see what you can expect this month because there's work taking place here off I-10. We talk about this all the time. I-10 East oh, uh, on the east side of Bear County, pardon me, it's barrier work and we're going to actually see that work continue on Tuesday, September 20th. That should be wrapping up a portion of it at least on Thursday, September 22nd. It is from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Single eastbound mainly enclosure from Cibolo Creek to Zool Road is what you can expect. 
expect. Now let's take another look over here at Loop 410. This time on the west side of San Antonio, pavement work. If you've driven through 410, you know that work is going to continue. It's current and should be wrapping up on Tuesday, September 27th. It is overnight, so plan ahead, you late night owls or early bird commuters, 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning. That's when you'll see alternating main lane closures in both directions from Ingram Road to US 90. Let's take one last drive over here, 281. You know we got to mention this, the bridge work that takes place there. It is uh, starts. It will start on Thursday, September 29th, and wrap on Friday, September 30th. That is overnight, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Full closure of the intersection at Overlook Parkway is what you can expect. But of course, you know where to find that information. You can grab those phones now, open your camera app, tap the center of your screen. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. That has a list of the current closures that are taking place in and around the Alamo City. So head over there and plan your commute ahead of time. A host of new movies stormed the Cineplex this weekend, and three of them landed in the box office top five. We're going to take a look at those estimates still ahead. And unsafe, unsafe sleep spaces can have dangerous consequences for you, baby. How you can reduce your child's risk. Nearly 100 infants die each year because of unsafe sleeping situations involving products found in many nurseries. CNN's Mandy Gaither takes a look at the latest data from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission and the push to prevent these deaths during Baby Safety Month. It happens every year. Babies die due to unsafe sleep spaces, and most of these deaths are preventable. What's comfortable for, for adults really isn't safe. For children. Between 2016 to 2018, an annual average of 87 baby deaths were linked to cribs, play pens, and bassinets, and extra bedding like pillows, blankets, or comforters, according to the latest data from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission. In that time, the agency says eight babies also died every year due to inclined sleep products. Wherever your baby falls asleep, whether it's on a couch or on, in a, a rocker or a swing, it's really best to be able to move the baby to a safe sleep environment. A baby should always be placed on their back to sleep to reduce risk of sudden unexpected infant death syndrome and suffocation. The sleep space should be bare, a fitted sheet only. Some warm pajamas are really the best thing. Not putting in a blanket, not putting in a pillow, but you know, nice pair of snuggly warm pajamas goes a long way. Since recalls on nursery products happen regularly, you can stay on top of them all by logging on to cpsc.gov. There you'll be able to subscribe for recall alerts. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Outside with Life Game, these clouds remind me of old Western paintings. Because this is the kind of clouds they put in them, and that's about all we've seen for okay. a long time. Storybook skies. You just need yeah. a couple horses you know, galloping oh, through. Be perfect. <laughs> 87 so far today. Hey, it was one year ago today that we hit 100, so it could be worse. That was uh, again back in 2021. 46 is a record low, though, set back in 1981. That sounds really nice about right now. The heat is on this week. We look at that forecast for you coming up. So we're going to be back in the thick of summertime weather like we got used wow. to. High 90. What did you say? A year ago it was 100 degrees today? It was. Oh, yeah. Man. In September, we can still see triple-digit temperatures. We pointed that out no. through about late September. No. Stop. Well, look, it's possible We had enough of that. I agree. I agree. And as I said earlier, I hope this is summer's kind of last gasp as we officially go in the fall. Maybe this is it. Get it out of our system and then uh, get into some cooler weather. Let's hope anyway. Let's take a look at the radar right now. We do have some showers down there around Victoria. Those are, are moving northwest, but as they do, they fall apart. So I don't think there's much hope of any of this activity making it into San Antonio. Now, if you're watching from Kennedy, uh, say Cuero, Gonzales, those are areas that could see a light shower today. Uh, but the chances are very, very low. There's a scene here in San Antonio. A little bit of shade provided by this cloud cover that's working through. 87 at the airport. Dew point is at 70. Southeasterly winds at about 9 miles per hour. The feels like number is 92 already. We're just in noon time. 90 in New Braunfels, 90 Gonzales, 87 Hondo, 91 right now in Carrizo Springs and around Bear County, upper 80s at this point, but you're going to see 90s 
very soon, and it's already 90 at Randolph. The feels like number, 95. 94 at Stinson, feels like 98 in Pleasanton, feels like 92 right now in Bandera, and it goes as high as 98 for that feels like number out in Gonzales. Reason for that, a lot of humidity. We started off very humid, and these dew points are having a hard time falling off. They will fall off some this afternoon, but not enough, and not before we get heat indices probably up close to 100 a little bit later today. Here's the case at 12 hour forecast 93 at 3 o'clock will go mostly sunny this afternoon 95 your high 93 by 6 p.m. 92 at 7 o'clock and we fall into the 80s this evening. Not much for cool down but a little bit of one and as we look at uh, the satellite picture you can see the clouds that have developed. They're starting to thin out though and I think we see less and less as we head into the afternoon and then uh, the big picture here across the country. It is so quiet across the nation's midsection due in large part to our heat high, our rigid pressure, which is settling in. Other than these coastal showers, Texas is not seeing much. And look at the forecast highs today. Wichita, 100. 95 Dallas, 95 San Antonio, Phoenix, 102. So you can see where the heat is. The cool stuff is on the coasts where they're looking at highs in the 70s and 80s. There's the ridge of high pressure does move more so over top of us by Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And that's why I think temperatures actually go up some. We'll have lower humidity, so that's kind of the trade off, but it will be hot for sure as we finish out the work week. Then by the weekend, our highs tries to scoot out of the way. The pattern changes. We get a big trough out east and this could be enough to push a front into our area, I think by Monday. With the front, we could see a little bit of a, of a rain chance and maybe a cool down. This is not going to be a big cool down by any stretch of the imagination. And it's still a ways out, so we are going to have to tweak the timing a little bit. But that's kind of the general idea at this point. 95 today, 95 tomorrow. 97 on Wednesday. If you're curious, the record is 100. So we may not get there, but we'll be close to a record on Friday, I think. 98 the high. The record is 99. Fall officially begins on Thursday. Yes, but even going into Saturday, it'll be toasty. Finally, by Sunday, we start to see the temperatures come down as that heat high fronts that will produce some rain as we get into uh, late September and October, guys. Let us pray. Thank you. Yep. Another story in Star Wars universe hitting the small screen. The stars are sharing why they feel lucky to take part in this project. The Woman King conquered the box office this weekend, but where did the rest of the competition fall? Look at the top five films coming up after the break. Hi. Bullet Train keeps chugging along. Two and a half million dollars put the action thriller in fifth place. The comic mystery See How They Run debuted in fourth place, taking in $3.1 million. Pearl, the prequel to X, opened in third place with $3.12 million. After one weekend on top, Barbarian slipped to second, scaring up $6.3 million. A decisive victory for The Woman King. Viola Davis stars in the historical action flick, which began its run in first place with $19 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. A new streaming series takes Star Wars fans into the earliest days of the rebellion. CNN's Rick Nemozella has a preview. To steal from the Empire? You just walk in like you belong. Andor is a prequel to Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. They can't imagine that someone like me would ever get inside their house. Diego Luna is back as Rogue One's Cassian Andor. I was part of the whole process. I had chance to digest everything, uh, to understand deeper why things were this way or this other way, to be part of, of the process of choosing the cast, the team, uh, looking at the designs and... and uh, I'm getting an all in. Genevieve O'Reilly reprises her role as Mon Mothma, a character she has portrayed on film in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, and the animated Star Wars Rebels. I feel incredibly fortunate to have been afforded the opportunity to step into the shoes of this woman 
at different times in my life, which are reflective of the different times in her life. Diego Luna shares that sentiment. I am a very lucky man, you know. I, I thought I thought Rogue One was the only chance I was going to have to be part of this world. And suddenly here I am, you know, still talking to audiences about new stuff coming out and getting the chance to explore deeper on the character. Every day we wait, they get stronger. Let's take them by surprise. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Speaking of superstars. Yeah, Fiona and Jen, <laughs> take it away on this Monday. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, are you ready to break the ice or glass? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yes, we are, because it's spooky. Creations with Justin's Cakes. Justin Dominguez is here. Now, this is not glass. It may look like it, but tell me what we have here. Yeah, what we have here is uh, isomalt sugar. It's kind of uh, made with like beet juice. Um, and it's a full sugar that kind of holds together. It doesn't burn. And we're gonna, I'm gonna have you guys break it apart in a little bit mm -hmm. and decorate some cupcakes. Out. Yeah, for sure. Wow, so it doesn't burn like doesn't regular burn. sugar. All right, and of course, John Vale with Alno Biscuit Company is here. What have you got right there? Because that mm -hmm. looks amazing. So right here, we have a brisket Benedict. And All right, and what, what goes on it? So we're gonna put the poached eggs on the top here. I mean, that Bear with me here, there it goes. And, and you guys are getting ready for brunch fest, right? Yes, we right? are. It's, a big it's this deal. Saturday at 11 a.m. That's more. Plenty. Uh huh. I know. I, I'm. I think I'm drooling over here. <laughs> okay, he's gonna finish that, but also. Yes. All right. Well, we've got a couple moms out of New Braunfels. So these are t-shirts made by moms for moms that'll have you wearing some cute sayings as you head out the door. You may just fall in love and with them. <laughs> yes, oh, I like that. Also, if you're looking for a place to take up the sport of pickleball, fastest growing sport, by the way, in the country, there's some new courts on the east side of town you can play for free, keyword free. We're gonna share all of that and more coming up on SA Live. We made it into the upper 80s, close to 90, 95 this afternoon, 95 on Tuesday. Heat index will be a problem today and tomorrow. Less humidity by the end of the work week, but those temperatures go up. 98 Thursday, 98 on Friday, guys. Doesn't that equinox have any pull whatsoever? You would think, but no. You would think. I know he's got some pull. Those people down there at SA, SA Live, they got lots of pull when it comes to food. Yeah. The cupcakes and then the, the was that beef? Is that what that was on a bun and with what? an egg? And they always have great stuff. Let's say live starts right. Please share now. <laughs> Today on SA Live, we're getting charged for the week. We're going to show you some hair raising mad science experiments. Plus, this is a big deal. There's a new place in town to play the fastest growing sport in the U.S. for free. We pick up the paddle to play pickleball. Creepy cake creations. A bloody heart never looks so good. We'll tell you where you can get a cake like this for the Halloween season or maybe all year long. That's today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. It's showtime. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and happy Monday. <laughs> you know, are you ready for fall? Because we are. Mm -hmm. We're also ready for fall temperatures, mm -hmm. even yes. though, you know, if your heart is pure and you believe. <laughs> Maybe. Here's hoping, yes, right? We'll okay, so it that. may be hot, but we're going to show you ways to make it feel like fall all week long, we promise. Yeah, we'll do our best. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Fiona Gorstiza. I'm Jen Tobias Strusky, and that is our question today. When does it feel like fall? January. For you. Sorry. <laughs> Fiona, yeah, for Fiona, <laughs> it's January. I try to channel the fall vibes, you know, maybe wear something fallish, have your pumpkin yes. spice. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, anything pumpkin spice, Creamer. hot cocoa. Yeah inside in the air conditioning or turn, something yes turn the ac mm -hmm. up or down yes <laughs> down yes yes you know what i mean okay so let us know when it feels for fall like cute for you and we may share your answers a little later in the show yes all right well when you start seeing spooky stuff on tv you know it's time for fall it's halloween baking championship and this year it's featuring a san antonio baker look at them yes Justin Dominguez, owner of Justin Cakes, is here to tell us how his spooky <laughs> sweets landed him on the Food Network. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Okay. So happy to have you. So congratulations, by the way, on Thank making you. it on the show, both that show and, and this, this one, show. Of course. Okay. 
<laughs> How did it all happen? Um, I've been making spooky cakes for years now, and I was actually found on Instagram. One of the producers uh, kind of messaged me and said, hey, we're looking to cast people for Halloween Baking Championship. Do you want to do it? Of course, I fell on the floor, and then I said, of course I will. <laughs> so just Sorry, technically, <laughs> you were discovered in I mean, like the new way people are discovered, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks, social media. <laughs> that is so cool. And we're seeing a clip here. You said these are your people, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah, the other why? bakers. Tell us why, why. Tell us why you found your tribe. I've never found a group of bakers that are just <laughs> fully just ooky spooky and weird and crazy. <laughs> and I finally found them, oh, 11 of that. them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Awesome. So we're going to get a, a sample of what you do. And you're an artist, right, as yeah, well? Absolutely. So that plays into your creations. What are we making today? Yes. OK, so I'm kind of riffing off of our first episode. It was all bloody treats. So okay. we're going to stick with that today. Our okay. first one, um, I brought you both a trusty bottle of uh, fake edible sugar blood. See, and I totally thought this was just like food coloring or something. <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially me. I actually <laughs> stole the secret from uh, movies. It's what they use in movies for fake blood. It's, uh, what is, what's in it? Corn syrup, cocoa powder, and uh, red food coloring. Asking for a friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now for the first dessert, we're going to do the cake. And okay. with this blood, you can you kind of can't go wrong. Just kind of go crazy. You can pour it all at once. You can let it drip over the sides. Whatever tickles your ooky spooky, really. This is fun. You said this. You always have this in your pantry. Is that right? Oh yeah, I always <laughs> have a blood. bottle or two or four of edible blood. blood in my apartment at all times. It's a must. Ta-da! <laughs> I may have gone a little bit dextrous nope, over here. But... No such thing as extra. <laughs> Ooh, this is okay, fun. So what flavors are these cakes? These cakes are just a regular chocolate cake. They're my okay. kind of go-to. Uh -huh. It's what people order the most uh -huh. uh, year-round. So I stuck with that. Okay. And. And tell us about, first, let's talk about that incredible decoration that's sitting on top of that cake. Because you are an artist first, so what is that made of? So uh, this heart and fingers are made out of modeling chocolate. Uh, I went to art school, and so it kind of just felt like working with clay. So it's the next best thing, and there's you can a, eat it. There's a lot of love that goes wow. into that, right? The detail, can you, you see Look that? at the detail, and like the blood like gooping into like the, you know. <laughs> It's mm. bubbles. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Look at those. Delicious. Is there a yeah. It's delicious. It's mouth-watering. <laughs> yes. There, another mouth-watering example. Look at those creations. So were there any creations that, you know, that you've done that, that you know, impressed, like where you impressed yourself? Uh, oh, there's fun. a couple. Um, I, this year I did a Stranger Things cake. I did Vecna. Uh, he was a popular one. I also did uh, the a Lady in the Lake from The Haunting of Bly Manor uh, was one of my favorites. Sounds spooky. And then we have this. Mm -hmm. We're ready to, to break this here because it looks like glass, right? Yeah, so for sure. Again, what's in this again? So this is isomalt sugar. It's a sugar substitute. Um, it doesn't burn like sugar does, so it makes great edible glass. So if you want to take that spoon mm -hmm. and just whack it a couple times on it. Oh, Ooh. look at that. Just like that? Yeah, okay. perfect. And okay. then you can just take pieces of it, put them in your cupcakes. As many as you want. And so it doesn't burn like regular sugar. Right. So that it's so much easier. You, you literally just pour it into and a so pot. So what is it? Oh, hold on. Go for it. Oh yeah, you mentioned that. It doesn't, doesn't really taste, taste like, like anything. anything, right? I don't really have a taste, but it's not bad. <laughs> but I it's mean, fun to pretend to chew glass. I love the effect. Glass. I mean, this looks like glass, feels yeah. like glass. Even. Totally. And you said they use this in the movies too, right? Yeah, like it's, uh, <laughs> when, when they break really bottles loud. over people's head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got right. the crunch going yeah, over there. Yeah, and then just finish it off with more of your blood. You can't go wrong with more blood. You can't go wrong with more blood. Let's add some more blood. And this is something that you started doing, you said, during the pandemic, is that right? Yeah, during the pandemic, I needed, I had so much time on my hands, I think we all did. And I just kind of channeled it all into making creepy, delicious <laughs> desserts. And thank goodness for that. Yes, yes. <laughs> and people can hire you, right, all year long for some spooky creations yep. or even just a regular cake if they have a yeah. request. Yeah. Oops, yep, absolutely. All dripping. sorts of flavors, everything. Any flavor you can think of, I, I can make. That blood is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just Ain't saying. Lie. I, got, I got some too off my finger. <laughs> and people can tune in and watch the show, right? So absolutely. exciting. Yeah, very. Okay. It's All right. Crazy. Tonight? Mm -hmm. Tonight, mm -hmm. 8 p.m. Okay. All right. You can watch the Halloween Baking Championship on Food Network or catch it streaming on Discovery Plus. And for more information, of course, on the S. On Essay Live tab. All right, this week we kick off the fall season, so it may be a good time to take up a new sport outdoor. I mean, I don't know about this yeah. week, it's kind of hot, but it's well, like a little hot this you week. Know, fall but, you season. Know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the fastest growing sport yep. in the nation. 
and it has been, right? Yeah. This is so it crazy. seems like it has been for a while, but it's continuing to grow, and there's now a new place to play pickleball, and you can play for free. Take a look. Go get it. This sport is taking off. Personally, I think it's it's fun, and it can be competitive if you want it to be competitive, but the biggest thing is the social aspect. You know, we for San Antonio Pickleball Association, we have over 150 members already, and I can honestly say 90% of those I would have never met had it not been for pickleball. Cindy Waddell is the president of the San Antonio Pickleball is interested can participate in the sport both recreationally or competitively. So we're super excited to open up our brand new courts here at Fairchild Tennis Center. Uh, we have six new pickleball courts that just opened up this past weekend. This is wonderful, not only for San Antonio Pickleball Association, but everybody in San Antonio for these new six courts in phase one to be opened. And Parks and Rec have been awesome funding this, as well as, as District 2. And then phase two opens, uh, we hope, later this year. We're hoping an additional 12 or 14 maybe. Um, so we'll have a lot because there's some nights when we play uh, open play where we have 90 people. So we, we try to make sure that there's um, Wherever people play, they're comfortable where they're playing. Like there's a kind of a recreation side and then there's a competitive side. Because somebody that's only been playing a month, right. I, for safety reasons, I wouldn't want them to get in and play with somebody who's a four or five player that might smash the ball. The San Antonio Pickleball Association also has outreach programs. Their website features tons of resources, whether you're trying to learn the sport or maybe just find a court near you. Well, two, two of our goals for San Antonio Pickleball Association it's a nonprofit, and it is to grow Pickleball San Antonio. The bigger one is we take monetary donations and we do tournaments to raise money for scholarships for high school kids, local high school kids in the area. This past May, we just uh, awarded six high school seniors some scholarships money in the first year that we were ever a part of it. It is for all ages and all abilities, and we've had um, grandkids come out with their grandparents and play. They are, you know, eight years old. We've had people that are 80 come out to play. We are open to the community, open to all ages. Bring yourself. We have paddles and balls ready for you here at the facility. You just have to bring yourself and come and play, ready to have fun. The courts are open Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 8 p.m. And on Wednesdays and Fridays, they're also open from 9 a.m. to noon. Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It wasn't for the community coming out and believing and wanting and advocating for the growth of pickleball. We don't know really what would have been. So we're just thankful for that and we want to welcome everyone to come out, enjoy these new courts and the existing courts and just continue to play and grow the sport. It was a hot day out there, but I was playing with them and I didn't even care Notice. really about that because you have so much, so much fun doing the sport all ages and the San Antonio Pickleball Association is ready and willing to help anyone who would like to learn and you can become a member. All right. For more information, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just scan that QR code on your screen. Still ahead on SA Live, are you having an existential crisis? This local brunch spot could be the cure. We check out some of their popular items on the menu. But first, if those spooky desserts didn't have your hair standing on end, this will. We're teaching you about fall weather in a very shocking way. It's all next on SA Live.